Man, this is such a beautiful place, eh? It's just so pretty. Well, get there legends, hope you guys are doing well. So I decided to ditch the old backpack this weekend and chuck on the good old swag. It's my first time doing one of these uh, traditional swagman trips, so yeah, keen to see how it goes. But I've come to this um, really beautiful spot. Let's have a look at it today. It's absolutely gorgeous. Giant river oaks, this really beautiful river just sort of mirroring its way through and we're the start of spring as well now, so beautiful weather. So I'm really um, going to enjoy this weekend. So how about we just make our way up a little bit further, trying to find a nice place to set up camp for the night and um, I'll go through a rundown of what I got inside this wagon and how I've got it set up. I think I found camp for tonight. Looks like a pretty good spot. Let's get the swag off. Oh. Man, the old shoulder. <laughs> that is pretty sore. Man, what a spot, hey. It's very nice, nice and tranquil. This will do uh, yeah, very well for tonight. Yeah, so quite a nice spot here. I was actually uh, struggling a little bit to try to find a good campsite. So I've looked down that way and although it looks nice and grassy and clear, it's in a bit of a ditch and so it's quite wet and moist and also it's quite uneven the ground. So not really a good option to camp on. Um, also just up here you've got the ridge and the hill. Um, and it's quite sloped so you can't really camp up amongst the gum trees and as it starts to flatten out down here there's quite a lot of flood debris 
and a lot of lamandra and plants around. So, and also, also the ground's quite uneven. So it's actually quite difficult trying to find a, a not, um, big enough site that's open and clear. So although I don't really like to camp this close to a river, it's probably gonna be my best bet. Uh, there's not meant to be any forecast of rain tonight. Tomorrow night's meant to be quite wet, but no rain tonight. So I think you should um, you're do me just fine. All right, so if those of you guys are from overseas and wondering what the hell a swag is, this is a swag. Um, so basically a swag is a very iconic and traditional way to go camping in Australia. Dates back to the 1800s um, when people were sort of moving around the country looking for work, uh, which is also known um, as on the wallaby track when you sort of go out looking for work. Um, they would, yeah, always carry a swag on their back. And so a swag is essentially just a canvas bedroll or a canvas tarp or sheet that they would sleep in at night time. And um, then in the morning they'll roll it out They'll have all their bedding inside of it, as well as their clothes and any other gear that they don't need access um, throughout the day. They'll keep that inside the bedroll and they roll that up and then have a yeah, leather strap on the back. And you also have a dilly bag attached. Although I didn't have the yeah, dilly bag attached how it's traditionally attached, you should have it slung over your shoulder. I've just got it attached to the swag, which is not correct. Um, I'm gonna, definitely gonna be playing around with this setup. But the idea is you have a dilly bag over the front of your shoulder, which will keep your food and any other bits and pieces you want access through um, throughout the day. And um, that's gonna be one third of your weight at the front of you. And then the swag will be two thirds of your weight at the back. And that's sort of um, a really nice, well-balanced way to carry your load and actually um, yeah, walk standing upright rather than sort of hunched over. Um, but a few other little interesting facts about the swag is um, you might've heard the song Waltzing Matilda. I'm sure every Aussie has heard that song, but if you're from overseas, um, definitely yeah, Google Waltzing Matilda. Um, it's pretty much the unofficial Australian anthem. Um, but basically a Matilda is also another name for a swag and waltzing just means to go out on foot. So Waltzing Matilda just means to go out on foot with your swag. Um, another name for the swag is Bluey. Um, so you might've heard the term humping Bluey. So humping just means to go out on foot as well, and bluey because inside the traditional swags they would have a blue, um, a blue woolen blanket inside, and so that's how yeah the swag got the name bluey as well. So yeah, quite an interesting history of the swag, and I'm definitely uh, keen to try and do a few more trips. I'm definitely um, got a few things I've got to tweak with it just to carry the load better, but it's a really nice way to go camping, eh? Just trying to yeah go back to our roots. So something I'll definitely um, yeah try and do a bit more in the future. But how about we um, roll this out and we'll go through all the contents inside of it. All right, so to start with, I'll just show you what I'm carrying on my person. So I've just got my bushcraft knife and just uh, my ferro rod, which I got from Core Knife and Tool. So I've just got that on me. And then um, I was carrying my billy as well. So inside my billy, I've got all my food. So it's a pretty um, handy way to yeah, carry your food. And now, I want to get a haversack, but in the meantime, I've just got this uh, bum bag that I got when I was in Brazil. Um, just before I went to Burning Man, I got this. So I've, inside here, I've just got my water bottle and um, uh, just my GPS as well and then as for the swag I've just got my bandana on the outside and here I've just got my dilly bag oh if I can get this bloody knot open <laughs> all right and then just inside this dilly bag just got a little first aid kit oh GPS so I thought my GPS was in here but actually I've got another lens in there I forgot so I've got my GPS here um, yeah just my spice kit just some gin and tonic and um, a head torch as well. And as for the swag. So this leather strap I got from a bloke who goes by the name of Howling Dingo on Instagram and on Etsy. He makes some really nice um, yeah, leather products in Australia, so worth checking them out. So on the outside I've just got my titanium fry pan. So just in this first fold, just got a little chopping board, just with my enamel plate. I told you guys a story about the other week when I was in the Pilliger. So I've got a little, uh, yeah, hand net here, just because I wasn't sure if you would get some yabbies in this river. So I thought I'd bring this along with um, a little can of tuna. If I get some time, I might just try and chuck it out and see if I get any yabbies, but I don't know if, um, yeah, well, I think it's a little bit too early in the season. It's still, what, just the first, um, so like the 3rd of September at the moment, so quite early, so it's probably going to be a little bit too cold for him, but we'll see how we go. Just a little hip flask with some musket in it. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so then yeah, like I was saying in here, we've just got some of my clothes. So I've just got a Shemag 
with my um, what do you call them? Thermals, just to wear when I'm sleeping. The flannel, and also it dries the bone as well. So like I was saying, tomorrow is meant to have a bit of rain, so might need that while I'm hiking out tomorrow. And then here you've just got some uh, little bits of rope, some cordage, my flint and steel kit. I've got a, just a silky gomboy saw. Just my washing up and um, your scourer and a few other bits and pieces. Now I've got a tarp, so this is actually hoochie. So, like I said, it's not meant to rain tonight. Um, there's no real trees I can really tie off to, so I'm not going to probably bother with this. I'll see how it goes. Um, but I don't think I'll bother yeah, putting up a tarp in, but a uh, tarp's always good to bring, because even though this is essentially waterproof, you can just sleep in this in the rain, it's not that comfortable, because every time you try and want to get in and out, you're just going to get everything wet. So it's always good to carry a tarp with you, so you can string that up above you, and then um, sleep underneath um, the tarp in the swag. And then I've just got my little pouch that's got all my other bits and pieces, like water filters and stuff like that. So, yeah, I a little speaker. Um, but yeah, and then inside here, I've got a inflatable pillow, just with my quilt, and then just an inflatable mat as well. Actually, I forgot to even mention what swag this is. So, this is actually um, by a brand called Winchester. They're a UK brand, which is, a, I know a lot of you guys um, think it's a bit sacrilegious to yeah, have a UK swag, but I saw it cheap on eBay. These are usually about $900, and I saw it on eBay for like, I saw Gumtree for about 350 bucks or something. So. I was going to jump it. I've been looking at it for a while, so I jumped at the opportunity. And um, yeah, I really like it. Eh? It's good. And actually, double is a hammock. It's got this um, little uh, slits back here that you can put a stick through and then tie it to a tree and actually um, yeah, use it as a hammock, which is pretty cool. I haven't done that yet, but um, yeah. So anyway, that's the, um, the bedroll. I'll get this set up and get this all tied up. But yeah, a pretty um, nice and simple way to camp. You basically just roll it out, and your bed's done. That's um, yeah, the beauty about swags. So it's got this little hoop just to keep the material off your face. Then on the side here, they just got these little pins that you just put that in and... Yeah, so that's done. <laughs> nice and simple, eh? Man, this is such a beautiful place, eh? Hey? It's just so pretty. It's just that light, it's just like dapple through the water and through the trees. Oh man, so nice. It's one of those places where you can just sit down and do absolutely nothing and be content. I've seen a fair few animals today as well. I've seen like a couple of dozen kangaroos, heaps of kangaroos around. Saw an echidna before, lots of birds out. Man, what a nice day to be out here. Cool. Alright, we'll use this dried up lamandra to get the fire started. Now always remember, watch out for snakes when you're sticking your hands inside of a bush. Thought of this dried up grass here, so that should also do to help get the fire started. Try not to get any damp bits.
All right, so I've got about an hour or so until it gets dark. So I figured I might just uh, chuck the net in with some tuna and see if we can catch ourselves a yabby. Like I said before, I'm not that hopeful um, just because it's still quite cold. And from what I read, yabbies don't really come out until the warmer months. But I figured why not just give it a crack anyway. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually just going to put a few punctures in this, place that inside the bottom. So <laughs> place that inside the net and then tape the handle to this stick. And the idea is I'll just let that sit out in the water and uh, hopefully the yabbies come up and then I can just lift that up and hopefully uh, scoop them up. So we'll see how we go. And that water is very cold so I'm very doubtful that the yabbies are going to be um, yeah, awake just yet this early in the season. But we'll leave it there for a little bit and see how we go. Alright, so I'm going to be cooking pasta tonight. So I'm just going to get some water. Now rather than filtering it with my other filter, I thought I'd bring along my Millbank bag. And so for those who haven't seen um, or know what a Millbank bag is, it's basically an old school way to filter water. So what you do is you submerge the bag. Let it soak through. So once the bag is soaked, then just scoop up some water. Now just wait a few moments so all the water on the outside of the bag drips off. And what this bag is doing is just getting rid of any sediment or particles in there. So you still have to boil the water, obviously, but this just removes any sediment. Now you either just tie this up to a tree, or you just hold it. It only takes a few moments. So if you've got a fire going, you're just sitting around camp, this is a good way to sort of uh, filter large quantities of water. All right, sweet, so that's enough water for the pasta. So we'll get the fire going soon, and uh, we'll get this on. All right, so I'm gonna have the fire about here, and then I've got these little Y sticks to sort of drive into the ground, so that way I can um, you hang the pot over the fire. So what I'm gonna do first is um, just scrape away some of this topsoil, and I'll keep that aside, so that way tomorrow, once I put the fire out and scatter the ashes, I can put that topsoil back on. Plus we've got a little patch of grass here that I'll pop back over it tomorrow. No, no lock in the yabby front. Alright, so just get out my flint steel, some char cloth. Now, when I was up in the bush just before, I came across some quartz. Now, in Australia, flint is quite rare. I'm pretty sure from what I've read, there's only one place in South Australia where you can get flint from. But quartz you can find pretty much anywhere, at least uh, around Sydney at least. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the, um, yeah, the old quartz a go tonight and see if we can get a spark from it. And those frogs are pretty noisy, eh? <laughs>
alright, time for a gin and tonic. Oh yeah. Man, those frogs are that loud. It's definitely going to make for an interesting night's sleep. But uh, anyway, cheers guys. Oh, that is too bloody good. So tasty. So I've got the uh, Young Henry's gin tonight. I haven't had it for ages, eh? But it's actually the gin that got me into gin in the first place. And I saw it on um, yeah, the shelves yesterday. So I thought I'd grab it. And man, it's such a good drop. If you guys uh, yeah, like your gin, then definitely I'm going to check that one out. Oh, man. What a spot, eh? I think I definitely locked out with this one today. Such a beautiful area. So nice and tranquil, eh? Even with <laughs> the... The noisy fogs, it's such a yeah, beautiful spot. Just having that stream just beside you. And these beautiful river oaks, I eh? oh, absolutely love camping among some um, river oaks or casserinas. Just that's such a nice vibe, especially like in the afternoon light when you just get that nice dappled light along the, the bank and on the water. Man, you can't beat it, eh? But well, anyway, it's about time we um, get some grub on pretty soon and starting to get a pretty decent better coals. And for tonight, I've got the Scotty Special. I've got uh, my signature pasta dish, which I absolutely love. So, yeah, very keen to get that on. All right, so first up, we'll chuck the billy on and we'll get the water boiled up. All right, so for the Scotty Special pasta, we've just got the spaghetti here, some mushrooms, uh, sweet potato, some broccolini, some garlic, some olive oil, Got some parmesan cheese and then some butter. So it's, it's a very simple pasta. Um, it's not a super saucy pasta. The butter is basically the sauce. So super tasty. So very keen to get this on. So first up is we'll, um, we'll chop up the sweet potato. Just chop up the broccolini. He is a nasty looking spider. I'm not quite sure what spider that is. It's pretty decent size as well. <laughs> oh, come on, mate. Shoot. That is the worst place to stop. <laughs> come on, mate. Bugger off. How about yeah, you go somewhere else, eh? Alright, oh, so this is what camping in Australia is like, guys. Just add the garlic. It was a good dollop of butter. Just taste the pasta. Yep, yeah, it's good now. Take that off. Alright, I'm just going to add the remaining butter. And just let that melt down. Now I'm just going to add the pasta to it. Now, obviously, you could add meat to this if you wanted to, but I tend to keep it just as veggies. Just got some parmesan cheese here. Just sprinkle some of that on. So yeah, there you have it, the old Scotty special pasta. I am so keen for this, so let's dig in. I'm not gonna lie, that spider kind of spooked me out a bit. <laughs> I'm a bit reluctant to sit down on the ground, considering he crawled right into 
um, with the firewood pile behind me. But it's all part of the being out in the bush, eh? Oh, I am so keen for this. Honestly, such a nice dinner, eh? Very simple, very quick. Definitely recommend you guys trying it out. Maybe some pine nuts would be nice with it. Alright, well, I'm going to devour this, eh? So, let's call it quits for tonight. Fingers crossed I don't get bitten by a spider in the meantime. And I'll see you guys in the morning. Right, so we've just got some avocado on toast here, and here I've just got some goat's cheese. Just sprinkle that on. Just my Swaggy's pantry. Just grab some salt. I'm just gonna put a little drizzle of balsamic glaze. Let's chuck the bacon on. I don't usually have bacon for breakfast, so this is a bit of a treat for me. If you don't want to put bacon on, mushrooms is a really good alternative. 
And lastly, we'll just top it off with some green stuff. So it's got some rocket here. Oh, there you go. Looks pretty damn tasty. All right, so I'll start off by just folding that end in a little bit. And I'll lie the dryer bone down. Followed by my schmag, my flano. And just grab my other little bits and pieces. Just tuck them in there. Now the trick is trying to keep it nice and tight. Those edges folded in. Now when rolling up a swag, it's all in the knees, eh? Try and sort of move forward with your knees to try and um, keep it nice and compressed. Then the top end, just fold that corner in as well. Try and squeeze all the air out. I'll just chuck these other larger items just in that last fold. Alright legends, probably about time we wrap this one up. Got some pretty dark clouds moving in and it can already start to fill the rain. It's meant to get really heavy today. It's been nice to try and get out of here before it starts bucketing down. So yeah, on that note, I want to say a big thanks to all you guys watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I had an absolute ripper of a time, mate. It's such a beautiful place to come and camp and it was really nice to sort of mix it up with the swag this trip. Definitely keen to do that, a few more swag trips in the future. Um, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video and you haven't subscribed already, I'd love for you guys to subscribe. Um, I'd love to try and crack the 100k by the end of the year. So. Hope you guys can help me out. And uh, also if you guys find some enjoyment in these videos and you'd love to support the channel, there's um, a Patreon link in the description below as well. So I'd love for you guys to check that out. So yeah, anyway, on that note, let's wrap this one up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hooroo.